Good evening, everybody. Shannon from the awesome Tucker CG Fly Shop with another informative, exciting, and entertaining fly tying video. And the great thing is, I don't think it costs you your time. It doesn't get any better than that. And honestly, I don't know if I'd want to pay for much knowledge from me anyway. So anyway, so here we go. We're going to get started here. As you can see here in my Norvice, I actually have a Hannig 130BL in a size 18. And if you were able to pick that size of that hook up right there, you need to be guessing some lottery numbers because I don't know if I could uh, look at somebody's hook and tell what size they had. But anyway, there you go. So we're going to go ahead and get us a little bit of thread started on here and get us a thread base spun up here on my trusty dusty Norvice and I actually am using the standard jaws as you can see even with the standard jaws on the Norvice you can use various various hooks down to small ones I also have the fine point jaws as well I use both of them but by far my most favorite jaws are the standard jaws so I'm going to take some high vis poly material here and I'm going to lay up here on the hook and I want to start getting some wraps and securing that to the hook shank up near the eye of the hook make some wraps in front and then i'm going to start posting this material up here like so it's going to get a little bit of strength give us an area we can tie the hackle to it and get to going and i know you know i hate to say this it's not as long ago that i did tie a uh, the orange parachute um, and the great thing is, you know, that fly was working well then. Hey, this, this fly right here has become a dominant player in our dry fly game for sure. And 18, 16s, 18s, 20s are your main players in this game. And, and by putting this parachute post on here, it really gives you a lot of great visibility at a distance. So now I want to spin my thread back to the back here, my trusty Dusty Norvice, and we're going to go with our tail. Our tail here today is once again some Coke de Leon. This stuff is fantastic. I love the colors that you can get in this material. Uh, many different shades are out there. Pardo, uh, oh, just different colors, man. I go blank. There's so many colors. It's kind of like Skittles tasting the rainbow, man. Just grab some and go. All right, so we're gonna get this slate up here to the side. Ooh, man, I got that link spot on, man. Sweet, cooking with gas, man. Going to go ahead and get that secured in there. And I'm going to deviate from your traditional, away from your traditional blooming olive, is I'm actually going to use thread for the body. And I'm going to be using some Olive UTC 140 thread. I just like the color of this particular um, thread and the way it does this body when it's wet. I just really like it. And you get some um, some stuff that's a little bit brighter. I just like this. And there's nothing wrong with having a couple of different color combinations out there. At the end of the day, you know, when materials get wet, it actually does change the way it looks and appears to the fish. It's something you need to keep in mind as you're tying flies. So what I'm gonna do, just very basic, I'm gonna get that thread started up here, secure it. I'm gonna bring my working thread up to the front of the hook here, put a little half hitch on it, and I'm going to secure that over to the post. Now, I'm going to take this thread. I'm not going to do anything as far as funky twist or anything like that. I'm just going to get it started and wrapping this up. Whammo, 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 whammo. Go in front to the post and around and all around, upside down. All that great stuff like that. I'm going to bring my thread back over off the post. Do a couple of wraps like that and secure it. Wham. I will use a little bit of dubbing here in just a moment, but uh, they'll save that for another fly. Put a little half itch in there. Showing, 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 swing, wings world. Okay. All right. Anyway, so um, great comments from me, people, man. You folks have been sending in pictures of your uh, flies, your time. It's awesome awesome that's like super super cool so i'm going to take a light uh dyed done feather here i'm going to secure that here to the side of the hook go ahead and get that started here momentarily with some securing wraps like this i'm going to go through here like that one two three four five six come down and around and around she goes now I'm going to take some little micro fine fly dubbing, dry fly dub, micro fine dry fly dubbing BWO made by Hairline. And it just takes just a smidge. A little bit goes a long way. 
a little bit goes a long way. So I got a little bit. I might have got a little too little. Okay. I want to get just a smidge more. I didn't get enough. It's always you can add to it, but you can't take it away. Well, you can take it away. It's just a little bit more difficult. As you can see, this stuff here. Oh, come on. Work with me, boys. Work with me. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. Now, the one thing about the Norvice is I could put this over here to the side, and I could do some some just crazy dubbing spinning for you and blow your mind and leave you scratching your head a little bit. And that's a great thing about this tool that Norm Norlander, uh, when he came up with this system here, was to tie flies easier and faster and better. But, uh, you know, now the uh, uh, O'Neill's have, have the company since Norm passed away. And, you know, all, all of these things, man, they're made right here in the great old U.S. of A. Uh, but, uh, but a lot of you folks don't have a vice like this, so I'm not going to blow your mind too bad. Um, I did put a little bit of dubbing up here just around this post uh, in the thorax area. It looks pretty doggone sweet. So I'm going to grab the hackle now, and I'm going to start wrapping it around the post, make some wraps um, there. And then here in a minute, we actually will uh, trim that post to the, the size of the liking you would like. So that's the beauty of this. And I like to put a lot of hackle on my uh, parachute post, to be straight up honest with you there. I like so. It's like a lot of hair. And speaking of hair, I told you I'd tell you a story about the Nair hair products. So when we was out, uh, I think it was the last golf deployment I was on over there. We had a couple of guys in our division. Um, they had a third class and a second class petty officer. And we had one first class. He was just being a major butt. And, and uh, at the end of the day, nobody really cared for this guy. And uh, for, for a couple of reasons there. And um, so anyway... So when you get out there in those six, seven month deployments, man, it, it just gets a little tough. And um, so they, these two guys had their wife and girlfriend, and let me, let me state that um, there, send them a care package. In that care package was some of their hair products. So we were set to have an inspection early one morning, and I had watch from the 0345 to the 0745. So I went down to the birthing compartment to make sure that the guys are up. Uh, and it was over on the port side. So I went over there to uh, to make sure those guys were up that work in the shop uh, that I had uh, there. So as I get down there, here comes this first class petty officer and I'm leaving the names out on purpose just in case, okay? So he gets up and he's running to the head and for you folks in the military, you know what the head is and for you non-folks, that it would be where you go to the, to the bathroom, okay? So he went and he was um, freaking out because he had a big old bald spot in the side of his head. Thought he was dying. So basically what happened was those guys pulled, her, pulled his curtains back during the middle of the night. And they sprayed his hair with the nair. And it actually did take the hair off of his head. And of course, uh, they did get caught. They had to go to um, captain's mass. They got busted in rank. And they had to do three days brig. Uh, bread and water so they said they'd do it all over again if they had a chance because it did teach him a lesson and he kind of chilled out afterwards the, the the funny thing was on top of that was we had an inspection that morning and so he was going around in front of everybody and we couldn't help but kind of chuckle a little bit and then he also walked around a week with uh, with that bald spot in his head then it was about the size of a softball too man before he went and got a haircut and on that carrier I was on, you could go get a haircut anytime you wanted to for the most part. So anyway, everybody from the Air Wing Ships Company down to the Air Wings knew who he was. And uh, that was just something that I'll never forget. And when we get together, we all kind of always have a chuckle about that. But as you can see here during the story time, that uh, it's probably like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Do they have story time there? I don't know. Never watched it. But he did have a blue sweater. Um, but anyway, so we actually secured our parachute post material here. We actually got our, uh, I'm sorry, our hackle secured. I've got in our half hitch there secured at a couple of whip finishes and I trimmed the post. So this bad boy here is ready to go to the fly box and go out on a guide trip or for some personal fishing time. This is a great fly. Um, give us a call, 1-828-488-3333. Send us your um, photos uh, there at uh, Tuck Fly Shop. Uh, uh, you can email us there at shannon at tuckflyshop.com 
or you can send them to tuckflyshop.com and uh, give me a follow on Appalachian Flies. It's Appalachian underscore flies on Instagram. And uh, keep up with what I'm doing there and uh, follow the shop. We appreciate you folks and have a great one. Take care.